All right. Good morning. Como tal, how are you? It is 7.03 a.m. on Wall Street, about two and a half hours before the open of trading. This is Quat Box Live, where you get your global macro on and uncover the best fundamental opportunities across the global markets. Yeah. Stocks around the world, gold, oil, Bitcoin. Yeah. All the majors, all the crosses. Very cool. So, Quantbox is an amazing research tool. And the whole idea is for you to uncover the trends. And when you do and you're trading with them, technically, you'll have the confidence to let your winners run. Let your winners run. Let your winners, winners run. So, you got to get your thought process organized know the things that what you want to buy and why or the things you want to sell and why and stay away from the mediocrity so if you're on a, if you're watching this on youtube take a trial it's eight bucks come on let me remind you that trading's risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. I don't think I've uploaded to YouTube in about a week and a half. <laughs> I guess maybe I'll try to do that today. So anyways, uh, oh yeah, this is always a good reminder. So once you choose your membership level, you can also upgrade to the AI alert service, the fundamental alert service. And this is always a reminder for me to take a look at what's going on. So uh, the last one I got was at 1 a.m. And it said gold, gold. Yeah, retail sentiment went from a negative one to a zero, which increases the score from a nine to a 10. Oh, that's interesting. The other thing, and I don't have any email open. Uh, let's see if I can do it quickly. It gives us the morning report, but it doesn't text you the morning report. It just emails you the morning report. So uh, where do I get that? Do I get it at this email? No. Well, let me check my other email. Yes, there's the morning report. You get a morning report right before the. London Open and right before the New York Open. So anyways, this is pre-London. And so we're looking at Euro Swissy. Uh, ooh, nasty. Sorry, Kiwi Swissy. Nasty. Negative three to negative five. Ooh, oof, that's a big score flip. Interesting. So you could you could open your charts and start with that. It doesn't necessarily mean sell, but if you opened up your charts and saw a bearish technical pattern you should seriously think think about it because it makes logical sense that's all quant box is is logic of course my phone is on fire now what's going on who's who disturbs my slumber All right. All right. So let, let's take a look at yields. Back to 3 0 on the 10. Boo. Oil's flat, but you know, down a little bit. Gold is up a little bit. I, I actually got knocked out of that long uh, trade that I had. Remember, I was just ever so slightly profitable. Uh, it knocked me out of break even. And now is probably right back to where it was. S&P 500, another all-time high for the 36th time this year. 55.77. Euro dollar, about the same. And Bitcoin recovery, remember we were at like 55 and we were thinking 52. Well, it went not to 52, but 58. Yet, yet there's risk off. Huh. That's weird. So this is acting risk on, but this is risk off. This is risk off. Okay, that's risk off. So, I, but this is risk on. Yeah, 
Mixed bag. Mixed bag, baby. Mixed bag. Yeah, and we lost this. Remember, this was a three or something, and this was a four. Now it's a two. Stuff is happening. I want you to know, or I want to ensure that you see it. Okay. Now we're looking at eight different markets on three different time frames. So you have a lot of intelligence here. And, uh, huh. We are losing the risk on. Remember, this isn't including seasonality, but seasonally, we typically lose risk on. So how do you feel about this being risk off and we're and this has gone from risk on to neutral and this has gone from a four to a two? Is that important? Well, that's for you to decide. Now, week over week, okay, we are still a one on the put call ratio, a one on long term treasuries, negative one on gold, zero on the S and P five hundred, which tells us really, week over week, it's it's not even up one percent. Now, remember, the media is making a big a big thing. Oh my God, we're at all time highs. Yeah, by zero point two percent. So anyways, uh, so week over week, we're, we're not even up 1%. And you look at short-term yields, you look at the dollar, dollars flat, okay? This is important stuff, isn't it? We get caught up in the noise, I think. But week over week, nothing's happened to the dollar. Nothing's really happened in the stock market. Okay? Nothing's happening in VIX. But when you when you add them all together, just in the last 24 hours, it's gone from risk risk on to mixed. We're we're losing some of the stuff over here. So there is something happening. And again, the media is like, oh my God, you know, uh all time highs, all time highs, all time highs. Uh be careful. Be careful. That's what this is saying. And remember, it fits right into seasonality. So now uh, more than one day of still, still down, which is risk on, but flattening out. The distance between the eight day and the one day is narrowing. And it's been rising, not falling. Because remember, we're looking at this direction. I guess let's do this in a different color. In our risk gauges, we're looking at this, this, and uh, in a month. So I guess, and this. Those are the three arrows that get put into the risk gauges, right? So it's still bearish. But it's been several days. I mean, look, we've seen this before, but it does matter. Okay. So it's still generally down on the long run. And not having it, well, I guess I can do it that way. And during this period, um, hmm, that's risk off. This short term period here that I've highlighted. Is risk off. Cool. So, anyways, uh, interesting. What about put call guys? Yeah, there we go. We talked about this yesterday, didn't we? Where uh, I said, uh, you know, this this area is very, very, very bullish, but usually to the point where you can consider it like a standard deviation. Once you approach uh, 0.75, 0.8, 0.75, uh, usually it reverts back to neutral. 
right? And that's what's happening now. So again, looking at this on multiple time frames, if I get my drawing tool here, my handy dandy drawing tool, um, on the short run, that's risk off. But of course, on the long run, it's still risk on because it's in the green. Okay, that's why we want to observe this on multiple time frames. <clears throat> it's cool that we have this these tools, huh? Like, can you imagine back when you first started trading Forex, the, you'd be watching VIX, yen, dollar, two-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, S&P 500, gold, and the put-call ratio and using all that information to make intelligent decisions? I would, I would venture to say probably not, huh? But now you do. Okay, now you do. Interesting. So things might be changing, but... Okay, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Delete. All right. So I'm eyeballing this, and it looks like the scatter plot is this way, which is best case scenario because that's precisely what Quantbox expects. Okay. Remember, these things down here are bearish and expected. These things here are bullish and expected. And so the outliers are like, Kiwi's getting crushed. And Bitcoin is rocking back. But everything else is about right. There's a cluster over here, a little sort of, you know, disaster, <laughs> right? Uh, this is the mini disaster. These things are slightly up, but are supposed to be slightly down. So th those are the real outliers. But the vast majority. Okay, look at Kiwi is weak, 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 Kiwi is weak. And that alert I got an hour ago was based on uh, Kiwi Swissy okay, moving this way on the scorecard. And you're like, wait, what? Okay, well, that means when we're here organizing your trading thoughts. Okay. Uh, Kiwi Swissy. Okay, right here. Move from neutral to bearish. Yeah, and that's why I got put into the morning report. You don't really care if you right? If it goes from a two to a three, it's still neutral. In this particular case, it actually went bearish and you got the alert. I priced it at 80 cents a day. And right now I'm pretty sure I'm losing money on the cost. It costs me more to send you the alert than it costs you to pay for the alert. So, uh, which is, I don't know, pretty funny. Um, but funny how, like a clown. Um, yeah, I'm not even joking. I, I'm pretty sure I'm losing money on that deal. But uh, but I priced it, I guess, appropriately. I wanted it to be less than a dollar a day, so that maybe maybe you'll use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, 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 right. All right, let's get back. Okay, let's do the econ. Okay, the only thing really interesting is the testimony. That's it, huh? That's it. Yeah, yesterday wasn't a huge market mover or anything. It could have been, I suppose. Blah, 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 data dependent. So 
So tomorrow is uh, uh, the, the really beginning of the actual news cycle. CPI, which is early this month, uh, it's usually closer to the, the uh, 15th. So uh, that's interesting. But nonetheless, uh, CPI followed by PPI, which we, we don't care that much unless you're, you're trying to use it as a, a leading indicator of what future CPI will be. But uh, OK, yeah, that's kind of how you use it. Uh, sure. Um, but the other thing is, I believe Friday is the uh, beginning of earnings season. And then next week we get a lot more earnings and we'll be focused on that kind of stuff. Of course, next week we will care about retail sales. Oh, for sure. <clears throat> Let's go through the cycle, maybe. Okay, euro dollar still bullish. Okay, we can look at that Kiwi Swiss franc. Okay, and you notice. Yeah, quant box went, oh, and sent you that uh, email an hour ago. And you, you can start to see like, oh, yeah, that's an interesting heads up, isn't it? So now that you're below the moving average, now you could be in the game of selling lower highs. Okay, much different than um, what was before. I mean, just in the last 24, 48 hours, there's something much different going on, huh? Okay. Kiwi N. Kiwi's not doing well. And we had a down day, but it's still technically up. Yeah. But we're neutral on that anyways. Take a look at the S&P 500. Okay. And it's steadily climbing, but look how flat this move was. And then look how flat this move. I mean, it's up, but like not by much, huh? Everything's steepening out. A pullback to the moving average is, is not even a bad thing. See, what I talk about in my book is when the velocity is too quick, people are more likely to get afraid and freak out because they're making too much money and bail, and then the trend collapses. But if it's slow and steady, people don't freak out. It's, it's an emotional thing. Yeah. Take a look at silver. A little bit of choppiness. What do you stink, huh? Oy vey. And I'd look at the moving average, pretty flat here, not super exciting as an opportunity. Yeah, if you measure this, uh, we have lots of direction, uh, you know, statistically, but we know trend-wise without a higher high. And look at the velocity of these drops, and then you want the velocity to, of the recovery, and yet we're at the neutral price. So I'm like, I don't know. I mean, statistically, that's what it says. That doesn't mean I have to believe it or like it. Now, Russell is waiting for the Fed to cut. Okay. Wait, I just noticed these are old prices. Is this not updating? Interesting. This all might be old. Hang on. Let's... Uh, Let's go back to the Kiwi Swissy. Maybe you guys are scratching your head on like July 10th. No, okay. So it was just uh, Russell was old. That's interesting. What about Nazi? What date do we have here? Yeah, June 28th. Everything stopped. Huh. All right. So that's cool. Uh, I need to uh, work with the team anyways. We're, we're on a big upgrade project 
right now. And so I don't know, is that what broke or maybe a service provider stopped providing the data? Interesting. Copper. Yeah, so commodities stopped June 28th. That's interesting. But Forex is okay. How about our Bitcoin? June 30th. Interesting. But Aussie yen is accurate. So our Forex is accurate. But our commodities and indices are not updating, huh? All right. Well, I'm glad I caught that. That's an easy fix. That's just a data provider issue. Cool. Anyway, it's like pew. Yeah. Wowzer, huh? Beautiful. See, some of these trends are good. Like when you when you looked at how choppy silver is, why would you want silver when you have this? Right? So, anyways, plan A is, you know, buy a smaller dip and plan B is buy a bigger dip, right? That kind of thing. I suppose you could also trap and break and say, well, if it breaks down, I buy it low. But if it breaks up, I buy it high. Sometimes you have to do that. You know, that's to me, that's real estate, right? <laughs> when you're a real estate investor, you always pay the highest price. I really should do that real estate course. You know, the secret to real estate is financing. If you're a professional financer, if you can access money cheaper than everybody else, you will become a billionaire in real estate. Doesn't matter what price you pay. And in fact, you'll pay higher than everybody else. That's why you'll be a success. But then you're like, but Wayne, you're, then you're not profitable. No, that's not what I said. I said you'll pay more money than everybody else. But I also said that if you have access to cheaper financing, you'll be just as profitable as everybody else thought they would be. We call that finance. You, In this case, not financing, but the art of financing, That, right? It's just money. It's just calculations. It's the same as buying a bond. It's just math. So your math will come out exactly the same as everybody else's math. But you can afford to pay more because your cost is lower because you have better access to financing. So you can pay more and be just as profitable as everyone else. And that's why you got the deal. Yeah. It's an interesting topic. But anyways, uh, but sometimes in Forex, right? Like I say, uh, you find price and you do like a trap and break. And so sometimes you have to let it make the higher high to access that, right? <clears throat> Anyways, anything else I should look at? Uh, uh, Euro Kiwi. Yeah, see, these are nice, aren't they? Okay, check this out. If you're going to do technical analysis, right? Mm. Mm, 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 mm. So really, that pullback is what you desire. Huh? When I turn, you desire. Huh? Little raw base for you in the morning. Suppose you're not a big raw base fan. Okay, so anyways, cool. That's neat. Any other opportunities? Probably like since Kiwi is is the one that's uh, you know presenting itself. So, uh, it, like for example, if today's risk off, you would expect dollar strength. Uh, but look, the, not nearly as clean, huh? This is why you need to do relative strength. So you can start with the scatter plot like we did today and say, oh, Kiwi is weak. Or you could look 
at the the AI alert that I got. Right? I got the AI alert. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, well, let's take a look at Kiwi. And you're like, okay, that one's not great. Okay. And uh, how about Pound Kiwi? And you're like, oh, yeah. Pound Kiwi looks great. What about Aussie Kiwi? Oh, yeah, that looks great. What about Kiwi Cad? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Kiwi Swissy, we already did. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Least exciting. Okay, you see how to organize your thoughts? And now you can pull up those charts. You can just create a list. So I want to look at Aussie Kiwi. I want to look at Kiwi Cat. I want to look at Kiwi Yen. Right? I want to look at Euro Kiwi. I want to look at Pound Kiwi. And now you can go to your charts. Thank you, Quant Box. Yeah, and we're already very bullish on this anyways. It, it's ever so slightly bullish until about September, October. So we still have some time on this. Retail sentiment, is that right? Heavily bearish. Oh my gosh. 98. I don't know if I've even seen a 98 before. Holy smokes. And yet it's going up. Huh. Well, hell's bells. Aussie's 50 50 institutionally. Even retail's got it wrong right now. That's kind of interesting. So they offset each other, and there's no winner here. Oh, huh, interesting. Brutal. Look at their month-over-month -month growth here. Wow, terrible. Look at inflation, 4% in New Zealand, 36 in Australia. No, There's no real winner. Unemployment about the same. New Zealand's still at 5.5. Aussie's about 4.5. Yeah, it's pretty split, really, even though it, there's lots of ticks to the upside. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm very bullish. Slight directional changes and stuff yeah unemployment rising which is bad you know cool interesting all right interesting guess you we can compare that like uh euro kiwi Yeah, look at Euro 50-50 as well, huh? This market tends to top out between August, September. So usually what I say is the third week of August. So that's kind of interesting. Um, hmm. Mixed bags definitely technically moving up. GDP favors Europe a little bit. Inflation. favors right europe a lot look at unemployment in europe that's the uh that's the uh lean towards 
uh, more socialist capitalism. You, Europe will always have higher uh, unemployment rates, but that's a choice they've made. That's fine. So another way of looking at, at that is employment is stable. Where in the United States, you can have booms and busts. Europe wants to smooth that out a little bit. So one of the consequences is persistently high unemployment. So in the United States, I think our new full, full employment is going to be like four and a half. And I did say that two years ago. Actually, it might have been three years ago. I forget how much time goes by. Um, and Europe is probably closer to five, five and a half normally. Just it'll always be that way, even when times are good. Anyways, interest rates are lower in Europe. So anyways, anyways, interesting. So uh, I'll leave you to it. Well, yeah, the, uh, yeah, that that's out here, right? Here's the, the official rate, right? Yeah, that was last night. Correct. I, I just kind of skipped it, but, um, but like, what's the rationale here? Um, GDP growth is very low. Inflation is very high. Okay, unemployment, I suppose, is okay. But with high inflation and low growth, yeah, uh, you know, uh, inflation is just still too high. So they can't cut yet. Yeah. Okay, and that's why I put this data here. And we're going to update this, or we are updating this. So this secret project we're working on right now, <laughs> um, uh, we are going to take this format and move towards this format. Okay. Now, this one isn't perfect either. There's some things that are going on here that have to be updated. But the idea is it's going to look more like this. And therefore, uh, it, it'll kind of explain, explain um, a little bit of what's going on and what it means. So, like, I covered all that, and I'm like, this is good, and that's bad, right, when I looked at the, uh, the Euro economic data, and uh, maybe this is helpful. You know, like, change in GDP. Okay, falling GDP is bad, right? Falling inflation is good. Okay, unemployment going up a little bit, not a big deal. Interest rates not rising is good. I don't know if I'll keep money supply. So anyways, we're, we're moving towards that. Cool, right? This, uh, this price data, I don't know why it's decided to only show the projection week over week, but there should be at least two weeks, okay? But uh, that, anyways, we'll get there. That's it. I'm done. We're good. Peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average.